Reading is closed on 20th of July, 2022. We always start with our disclaimer, go over our calls and make some predictions. It's my trading plan for tomorrow, July 21st, 2022. Remember, I can be wrong. Any trade you make should be at your own risk. I'm going to be gone most of the day tomorrow. Probably won't make any trades. So if we have to make any changes, I won't be around. Get a few calls. Look for the pattern with the early high, which is this, and tomorrow should also have the early high. We had a target, we said, of um, 39.15.11. We didn't gap up. The rules call for it to print, but it didn't. It's a failed target. We added to the list. Should print it sometime. Just can't say when. We had another target, 39.59. I said if it did print that we, I wasn't convinced we were going to stop there. It did print and we didn't stop there. Here's what we said. Tomorrow's the early high pattern. Two new targets were generated from today's patterns, 39.45.11, 39.30.85. We don't gap up smartly. The rules call for those to print. When you have a cluster like this, you might think it's a lock that we're going to drop and hit these targets. And usually that's what happens. But about twice a year, during a period of a strong impulsive move, usually I get a cluster of targets which don't print in their preferred time frame. And it's only in retrospect you know that this is going to be one of those clusters. So we can't just count on these things blindly. Let's look at the other chart and then see some other indicators. Got an ultimate buy signal early on. That certainly worked. BJT said this move up isn't going to stick. I'm going to retrace. Said this flip down wouldn't stick. Said this flip up wouldn't stick. And now says this move up wouldn't stick. Gives us the targets. This is a major trend line. We went up to it, but not through it. The rule is you gap over the line or the line wins. By the line winning, I mean either you stop here, reverse, or if you go over the line without gapping over it, the move up doesn't stick and you retrace to the line usually pretty quickly. Well, this is the count I'm using. At some point, I want way black B to end and wave black C to begin. When black C begins, if my 32.29 target is right, that's this line, I'd like black C and black A to have a good Fibonacci relationship. If we end it today right at that trend line, then black A is 61.8% of black C provided it ended here on June 14th. So let's focus in on this and see if we get a count ending June 14th. Well, this is the count I've always had, and this black A is June 14th. Problem is how to count these other waves. It's possible to count this as an A bracket, B bracket, and C bracket. And A and C are quite equal as long as this is a truncated fifth wave and you count it as ending there. So let's see if we can count this as, an, as a truncated fifth. Well, here's the B and here's your one, your two. You can count this as three and that's four. You have to count this as one, two. And one, two, three, four, five for three, and that's four and that's five. So it is possible to count this as a truncated fifth without breaking any rules. And if that is where it ends, you can count this as an ABC up with C equal to A exactly. So if resistance hold here 
holds here, there's a count compatible with this rally being over. The catch is until you reverse and stay down, you can't be certain that's what's going to happen. If we do gap up over these highs, all that business goes away, all these things fail, and you could have a huge rally, a huge rally which keeps on going. So it's all a question of whether this resistance holds or not. And this pattern usually rallies. It's a new high at the close. That didn't happen. And if it does not happen, it's usually a straight line drop. Well, that didn't happen either. So if tomorrow's open, I'm thinking we're either going to gap up here or gap down here in all likelihood. Futures are down now. But that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you could still move up here and kill the whole idea. But if we do drop, you've got what you need for this rally ending. Tomorrow's pattern has a really high. We could still get down. There are two new lower MJT targets. Let's we gap up smartly. The rules call for them to print. Today's pattern usually closes near its high, drops in the straight line. Otherwise, neither one of those things happen because it's tomorrow's open, which counts, not today's close. I expect a large gap at tomorrow's open to rectify the situation. Now, the NASDAQ McClellan oscillator is over its upper Bollinger Band. Once it reverses through it, a sell signal is given. It just hasn't reversed through it yet. You're in position to reverse and give a sell. And maybe you will tomorrow. If we drop tomorrow, you'll probably get a sell, but it hasn't happened yet. Couple that with the trend line resistance at the high of day, lower MJT targets, and the wave count compatible with the rally ending, and when it has just about all one needs to be bearish for tomorrow. The catch, and it's a very big catch, is that gapping over today's high would break through resistance and invalidate the count. We have a cluster of unfilled MJT targets and about twice a year, system leaves a cluster of targets behind temporarily. In the past, they've always filled at some point. Market continues on its way. I can't rule that out, especially since breadth has been increasing significantly. So here's the bottom line. There's likely to be a big move at the open. It should tell us whether resistance is held or not. So we open down here, that's probably the end of the party. We gap up here, I think the party might have a ways to go. And I don't like having a guess on such things. So we'll just say that tomorrow has the early high pattern. And that's today's call.